I recently came across this power supply which is um, it was driving some LEDs in our house and the cables a bit broken so you see the uh, it's got trapped in something and you can see the the copper there which is not good um, now I don't know if I'll be able to repair this that there, there is like a you know um, a grommet here a strain relief I might be able to push the wire back into it uh, you can actually undo it because it's got these little nuts holding it together which is quite nice but I thought it'd be interesting to open this up anyway because this is an example of a quite an old power supply this is from about 20 years ago so this came with a modem so you can see it says 14 volts 850 milliamps and by the weight of this you can tell there's a transformer inside which is the, the way that power supplies used to be back then uh, so if we look so here's a like a modern equivalent this one is 12 volts 1.5 amps so this came with a external disk drive and if I if I weigh them these kitchen scales here you can see the difference so that's 400 odd grams and the modern one 93 grams so it's like four times the weight for the same amount of output power So we'll crack it open and have a look and um, see how these power supplies used to be designed back in the day. nicely see th these days they're more likely to be glued or ultrasonically sealed but this is just held with those three tiny coach bolts so you can see the you know the most important structural element is this big iron cord transformer so you've got some wires going down there to the live and the neutral and then on the board here there's, a, there's an insulator here to stop the transformer core from touching the mains which is a good thought and then on the on the board itself all you can see is this big cap so 2200 microfarads 25 volts and then there's four discrete diodes which no doubt make up a, a bridge rectifier and there, there's a missing resistor there I'm not sure what that was for perhaps to allow the capacitor to discharge but there's, there's no component in there actually it's this is probably not very surprising given the age of this thing but I can see some marking here like some liquid has come out so so this 
capacitor and it's a little bit yellow at the bottom as well so this capacitor is probably on the way out so we can sketch this out and this is only a guess because I haven't buzzed it out but basically it's going to look something like this so we have the transformer that's directly connected to live and neutral on this side and then here there's going to be bridge rectifier like so and then our big electrolytic capacitor which is going to give you know like it said 14 volts didn't it but it's, it's probably going to be 18 volts which reduces on the load which is the you know typical cheap power supply from from back in the day these days with the uh, the new switch switch mode ones which are much lighter they also have um, very close regulation to their target voltage so let me see if I can pull that wire through and fix it right I didn't have much luck with the grommet there it's sort of sealed plastic thing that I had to cut off um, but I've got some other grommets here. I've got a circular one. I think I could probably co-opt that. And use that instead. And also I've got this little PCB standoff which I could use to make a strain relief so that you can't pull the cable out from inside. I thought that would be a good idea. And I've also decided I'm going to swap out this capacitor because it's so old. Oh. So I've got a comparable value. I've got 3300 at 25 volts. I'm going to use that one instead. Right, that's the old component out. So I've fed the wire through the grommet there and through my strain relief. So I'm all ready to reassemble now. It's the negative side is here. My replacement cap. And then the wires, the positive has a little white line on it, which is that one. which is on the same track as the negative side of the capacitor if you can see that Left that 
diode a bit dry there. It sucked a bit too much solder off. If I can squish that grommet, looks like it's going to work. Now I guess plug it in. Okay, reading about 20 volts. 20 volts with no load. So there you go, old power supply repair. Totally economically unimportant to do, of course, but it's a new capacitor. Good for another 20 years.